This is Elizabeth Baldwin. I'm the um, Agriculture and Natural Resources Extension Agent in Page County, and I am for the soil because it's the basis of all life here on, on planet Earth. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of For the Soil, a conversation. I'm your host, Jeff Ishi, and of course, my co-host, Dr. Eric Benfelt with Virginia Cooperative Extension Community Viability, and Mary Sketch Bryant with the Virginia Soil Health Coalition are joining us on this, I say special episode because this really is a special episode. Dr. Benfelt, would you introduce our special guest? Yes, thank you, Jeff. We're fortunate to have with us Nelson Muiru from the Kijabe Environment Volunteers Organization from Kenya, East Africa. And I was fortunate to participate in Virginia Tech's East Africa Summer Institute for Educators and spent a little bit over a month in East Africa visiting universities and different nonprofit organizations and was fortunate enough to visit Kenvo in Lari, Kenya, and was struck by Nelson's uh, vision as well as the community focus of their work there in East Africa. So welcome, Nelson. And if you could maybe tell us a little bit more about where Kijabe Environment Volunteers is situated in Kenya and East Africa and about the farming and forest resource management there. About that, I know I just received a call, and my name is Nelson Moiro from Kijabi Environment Volunteers, which is a community based organization in Lali Sub County. Lali Sub County is in Kiambu County of Kenya, and we are located about 54 kilometers northwest of the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. We are basically within uh, what we call Kikuyu Escarpment, which is a great ecosystem within the Southern Abadeas, which is a key water tower and a key biodiversity area within our country. So Kijabi Environment Volunteers, mostly abbreviated Kenvo, is a community-based organization that was formed by young people who identified with a problem that the community in Rari was facing due to the destruction of indigenous forest. There was a lot of cutting down of indigenous trees, and this was really affecting the climate. This was really affecting the environment. This was really affecting the production of crops within the private farms and the overall production of uh, services from uh, this great ecosystem. So Kijabi Environment Volunteers, uh, formed back in 1996, has been working within the community and with the community in activities related to environmental conservation. And some of these includes training the community on the importance of the uh, the forest ecosystem that surrounds us, the importance of protecting and uh, utilizing the farms that we have on our private farms in a very good way so that it can continue producing for a long time. And as well, being able to take care of whatever resources are non-renewable within the forest and even for them that are renewable, how best can we be able to utilize them? We've been in operation uh, since then, and we are very happy that uh, today we can be able to extend our empowerment, our education, our sharing of knowledge to such institutions as Virginia Tech, because through their visit uh, in a month or a month ago or two, we were able to host them and we got an opportunity to share with them how we work within the community and how the Kenyan community, how the Lali community are able to, you know, conserve and preserve what they have as the natural resources within our area. 
uh, a little bit of uh, how we do or we practice agriculture, especially in our area. Kenya is majorly an agricultural country, and therefore we debate so much uh, on uh, agriculture for our food production. Lari being at the heart of the central highlands, which are the most uh, agricultural producing areas, uh, forms and becomes a very critical area where food crops come for you know for the major cities and for the larger part of the population within and therefore uh, what we do we have the local farmers producing both for domestic use and as well for the uh, markets be it the local markets within Lari but also for the major towns like Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu, Nakuru in Kenya. We are also uh, part of these products find their way outside the country's boundaries. And this is therefore how important that Lari as a catchment or Lari as a food production area is to Kenivo. We also have cash crops like coffee and tea coming to, uh, from some parts of this ecosystem. And therefore, it is very important when the community understands the important role they play in conserving the environment around here, conserving the forest as an ecosystem that services the you know, climatic conditions around this place. And therefore, this is how we do it. And uh, today, we are facing a challenge because the way we did this in the, uh, for example, in the 60s is now changing because in Kenya, culturally, and especially in Lari, where we have majorly the Kikuyu community, we have uh, each father or the man of the house subdividing their farms to the sons. So for example, my dad have uh, four sons. And therefore it means if his farm is four hectares, he would subdivide that for each son to get a portion of that farm. When that son gets a portion of that farm, they will now start practicing whatever agricultural practices or activities that they feel would fit for their household needs. Unfortunately, not all of the four sons would practice the same activities. And this poses a problem because if I decide that on my portion of farm, I'll do grazing and the other person decides on the portion of farm, they will do tree growing and the other person will decide I'll leave my farm uh, as a bear land and I will not do anything on it. And then the other father, uh, son would engage his portion of farm to do extensive and intensive uh, agricultural production. All these four practices would affect each other. And therefore, it is very important for organizations and groupings like Kenvo to be on the lookout on the changing use of farm and even for the government to put together or systems that uh, would facilitate these farmers to know that now that the farm sizes are reducing, how best can we continue producing the same amount of food? Or even if they are less than what we could be able to produce in a sustainable way. And therefore, this is how Kenvo comes in, in terms of ensuring that the farm sizes against the productivity is maintained for at least uh, some balances are created. We, We're talking yeah. today with Nelson Muriru. He is the director of the Kajabe Environment Volunteers in Kenya in Africa, our special guest today. And Mary, I'm going to offer you the first opportunity for a question for Nelson. But uh, first of all, I wanted to let our listeners uh, be aware of some resources to learn more about this organization in Kenya. The organization is Kajabe Environment Volunteers. They do have a Facebook page. I'm looking at it now. Just do a search on Facebook for Kajabe. That's K-I-J-A-B-E, Environment Volunteers. 
and the abbreviation for the organization is Kenvo, K-E-N-V-O. They also have a website since they are a nonprofit at Kenvo.org. But Mary, I uh, understand you have a question for Nelson. Nelson, this is it is incredibly interesting and would be interested in learning a little more about how you mentioned that Kenvo's background is really tied to the destruction of, of forestry, of forests in the area, um, but also really that large agricultural uh, base in Kenya. How do you, how do, does forestry and forest restoration um, combine with crop agriculture in Kenya? Thank you so much for the question. And uh, I will speak uh, specifically for our community around the Rari because we are surrounded by indigenous forests and indigenous forests are key to the climatic conditions of the area. They are the source of uh, water and especially from the rivers. They also replenish the climatic conditions in terms of, um, uh, you know, maintaining the, uh, the humidity within this area regulating the temperatures, you know, and actually holding on to the rains when uh, we have water, the sort of balance, the runoff towards the agricultural land. And uh, re recently or over the time, we've been able to note that farms that are nearer the forest produces more than farms that are further away from the forest. And this can be related because we are talking of biodiversity that is held within the forest. For your information, biodiversity is about everything that is within that forest. And uh, for a forest, we are talking about uh, the trees that are within this forest. We are talking about the birds that are within the forest. We are talking about the mammals within the forest. But most importantly, we are also talking about the small uh, insects, the small living organisms that we cannot probably see unless we are searching for them that cause a balance and create uh, you know, a balance and a service to the soil. Uh, for example, and uh, again, we also have, for example, the bees. Agriculture depends on pollination and the forest serves as one of the most undisturbed uh, environment for the bees uh, to uh, you know, create a home and also be able to work around the farms that we are farming. Therefore, once we, de uh, we cause a disturbance on the forests, we can be able to tell the difference because we are disturbing, uh, for example, the habitat for the bees and they will be able to, for example, run away further from the farms. Thus, they are not able to pollinate our farms for good production. Mm. The other service is water. When we have water coming from the forests and flowing into the private farms or downstream, people can be able to use this water on their farms. And we are also able to harvest this water for drinking purposes. So this is how key the forests are related to agriculture. Thank you. Nelson, you know, as Kenvo has evolved since 1996, can you talk about how you've worked to build community trust and cooperation through the years? I know you've become very diverse in many different ways, but I think how did you build trust in those initial years? Thank you so much, Eric, because number one, we need to understand how do we work with the community? And the first thing that we do is identify with the community needs. Once you identify with the community's culture, how do they survive? Because most of the time it's about livelihood. Anyone that is waking up and going to uh, work they are doing this so that they can be able to put food on their table. And once we understood how the community works around the Lari, we were able now to come in and talk to them. So we started off with simple studies and simple reports. 
whereby we would engage the community to evaluate the importance of the forest and the activities that were happening by then that were destructive. People would go into the forest to cut down trees, excuse me, for charcoal, and others would do that for timber. But at the end of the day, they would do this so that they can sell to make an income. And once we followed that up, it was because the farm sizes are reducing and the farms were not as productive as they used to be. And therefore, when you are able to show the community alternative ways of earning their livelihood, you'll be able to win their heart. And again, one unique thing about Kenvo is we never did it for the community. We did it with the community. We would work together to come up with solutions that fit different uh, strata within the community. If, for example, certain farmers, certain group of farmers feels that on their farms, it would be best if they did dairy farming. They would rear dairy cattle for the milk production. We would work with them and look for a project or an initiative that would promote dairy farming. If on the other part, farmers felt that the piece of land would best be fit for beekeeping, then we would work with those farmers to do beekeeping. And that's how we gained, uh, number one, the community trust and ownership to the initiatives that we were uh, bringing on board. Again, it's about linking these farmers to the market for the initiatives that we have. So by linking them to the market, they are already able to relate that we are producing this and we can be able to connect with the incomes. Thank you. Very Thank you. interesting. And of course, motivation is important wherever you are, live on the earth, whether you're a farmer, a consumer, but people need to be motivated in order to be encouraged to do things. And Nelson, we want to thank you for being a guest on this episode of For the Soil, a conversation. We're going to invite you to stay on online there, and we're going to continue this conversation in just a few moments, and we'll create a part two episode of For the Soil, a conversation. Once again, we've been talking today with Nelson Muiru, Director of the Kajabe Environment Volunteers in Kenya, Africa. Once again, those resources on the web at kenvo.org. That is spelled K-E-N-V-O dot O-R-G. They also have a YouTube channel and a Facebook page. Kajabe Environment Volunteers. That's K-I-J-A-B-E, Environment Volunteers, abbreviated Kenvo. Nelson, once again, thank you so much. And Mary and Eric. We'll be back for part two. Thank you. Thank you, Janelson, and thank you, Jeff. For the Soil, a conversation is made possible with funding support from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation and the Agua Fund. Other partners include the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service, Virginia Cooperative Extension, Virginia State University, Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation, and partners of the Virginia Soil Health Coalition. Views expressed on this podcast are those of each individual guest. To download a copy of this or any other episode, visit the website forthesoil.org. And if you should have a specific question about soil health, call your local extension office, your local USDA service center, or a soil and water conservation district office. Music used during today's program was provided courtesy of The Flip Charts, all rights reserved. For the Soil, a conversation is produced by On the Farm Radio in collaboration with Virginia Tech. I'm your host, Jeff Ishii.